Hello everybody and welcome to another explanation video. Today I will be going through my update suggestions for Town of Us slash Among Us. Most of it is Town of Us, but there are a couple of things that could just be applied to, you know, vanilla Among Us. The whole point of this video is to focus on how, what kind of features could be added to make Town of Us a better mod or a better gaming experience. Now this video isn't going to be specifically looking at update, uh, sorry, bug fixes. There's a lot of bug fixes that need to happen with both Town of Us and Among Us. Uh, for example, voting is not visible. That's a real problem. The airship map is a bit buggy. The assassin role doesn't work. The investigator role gives you a very low frame rate and makes it very unplayable. When you're playing with the arsonist, if somebody leaves, then you can't Fin like win the game you can't like douse people and ignite it or whatever because it's too bugged out um, all of those changes should be fixed I'm a I believe they're aware of all of these changes uh, so you know as soon as they can get to that that would be great everything that is going to be said is going to be taking into consideration the newest update uh, so which would be 2.1.4 so with that being said let's get into the update suggestions number one even if anonymous voting is on, dead players can still see who votes for whom. Even if anonymous voting is on, dead players should still be able to see who is voting for who, because you can't see everything that's happening. Um, you know, I feel like that's a relatively fair option. That should be, um, actually, I would say more, less of an option and more of a thing that's kind of forced. This is like the one thing that's more, I think it should be forced rather than an option. Now I don't now I believe that this is like w pretty much the only thing that I would recommend that should just be applied to regular among us even outside of town of us even in regular vanilla among us this should be a feature that being said if the uh you know the modders at town of us can fix this that would be cool I would like to see that happen but yeah that should be a thing um even if you are dead uh and anonymous voting is on you should be able to see who is voting for whom also, I, that reminds me, did I mention that as part of the bugs that the uh, not, uh, the votes didn't work? Well, that should be fixed. I'm pretty sure they're well aware of most of the bug. Number two, if the setting dead can see everyone's role is on, dead players can see who the executioner's target is. Whenever you're playing a standard Town of Us game, you can see who everyone's role is if this setting is turned on. So I want to go on top of that and add one extra layer to it because it's the only bit of information that the dead players don't have and it's that the dead cannot see who the executioner's target is. Now realistically I don't know how they could apply this in a sensible way. Maybe they have like an X over the the character of I don't know. I don't know how they would apply this, but I do think it would be nice for the executioner's target to be visible to all of the dead players if that setting is turned on. Number three, and this is a big one, use limit counts for many of the characters. So as an additional option, rather than having a cooldown, they simply can only use it a limited amount of times. This would be an extra option for the Swapper, Medic, Engineer, Seer, and Time Lord. These roles have the potential to be OP, so having the option to limit their effect without having them be OP or requiring an assassin would be nice. As an example, Rather than having the engineer only be able to use his or her ability once per round or per game, instead, they should have a limited amount of uses counter from 1 to 7, with 1 essentially being the current once per game rule, and infinity being the once per round rule. Regardless, the limit is still once per round either way. So even if you have it set to infinity, that doesn't mean that you can, you know, use your ability more than once per round for the engineer it's still once per round as a maximum but instead of you having to be able to use it an infinite amount of time instead you only get one two three four five six or seven uses or infinite uses which would be basically the way and how it works now with once per round number four this is also a big one being able to use multiple of the same character in a game this one is simple. Along the character stats for every special role, except imposter roles, is the ability to choose how many of that specific role can be in that game. And the percentage chance of that role is also applied to the second, third, or fourth of that role. 
If you want, you're going to have all innocents being spies, for example. Or, as another example, um, you can have two engineers in a game. Instead of only being able to have one of each role, you can have multiple of each role. You can have three seers, which would be overpowered, but I'm just saying as an additional option, that would be cool. Number five, the option for the executioner win condition to be satisfied even after the death of the executioner. Now, like I said, this is an option. If you want the executioner to be able to win even after they have died, this is a way that it could possibly be done. If you don't like that, you can simply just turn that setting off and then continue to play the game the way you want. Um, but if you do want the executioner to be able to win even after they have already died, this would be a good setting. Number eight. Well, apparently somebody doesn't know how to count and that somebody is me. I uh, somehow forgot number six and seven. So, uh, you know what, we'll uh, throw that at the end, I guess. Number eight, a rework to the modifiers, including modifiers to modifiers. This one is the least important, but would be a nice touch. So here are the following ways the modifiers would work. So with Torch, this reduces the effects of the lights being sabotage. Your following options would be 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Uh, if you selected 100%, then it would essentially be the way that it works currently. But you could also additionally make it so that you only lose your vision by 25%, or 50%, or 75% as additional options. Deceased. D killing the deceased increases the cooldown, except for the hitman. The hitman is a special role we'll get into later. Options. Uh, so the options for this one would be 200%, 250%, and 300%. 300% would essentially be the same way as it works currently. So as you know, the way that the deceased works now is if you kill the deceased, whoever the killer is gets a 300% three, uh, increase to their, or their, their, um, their kill cooldown uh, would be increased to 300%, or three times as much as it is. Instead of it always being three times as much, this would essentially give you the option to make it only two times as much, or 2.5 times as much, stuff like that. The Flash increases the movement speed of the affected player. The options would be 150%, 200%, and 250%. If you selected 200%, that would essentially be the same way as it works currently. So, as you know, right now, the Flash only ever increases the movement speed by two, or two times. This would give you the option to make it by 1.5 times or 2.5 times, stuff like that. With all the other modifiers, that being the tiebreaker, drunk, and giant, and button berry, there are no changes. I think that they don't need to be changed in any way. Uh, they could just work the way that they work currently. Number nine. At the end of the game, it should show a screen with everyone's roles, instead of just a screen for the victors. If this can't be done easily, then how about, instead of the game ending when a victory condition is met, instead it will show the screen of everyone's roles from the meeting room, and then the game ends. So that way, even if you would never died, you could easily figure out who everyone's role is, instead of having to go into the lobby and asking who is who, or potentially just never finding out. This is how it works currently in um, the versions of Gmod TTT that the Yogg's cast and Achievement Hunter use. So, finally, for number 10. Other than balancing changes, there's also some potential other extra roles and modifiers that may or may not work out, but if they don't, they can always be removed. Just as a disclaimer, all of these role names are more or less just placeholders if uh, the developers of Town of Us think that there's a better name or uh, a better way that these roles could fit into it. Remember, these are all just suggestions, right? Um, if, they, if they have a better name for these roles or if they want to modify the way the roles work, uh, that's totally fine. I'm just throwing suggestions out there, right? To start off, we have the Foreseer, who will be a crewmate or is a crewmate role. Um, the Foreseer will get a flash on screen five seconds after someone has died, including an arrow in the general direction where it happened for a short time. Uh, by default, this time will be two seconds. So, 
As an example, if somebody kills on the top left of the map and you're in the bottom center of the map, then whenever you get an arrow, there'll be an arrow showing up to the top left for approximately two seconds to give you an idea where somebody has died five seconds ago. Now, like I said, this is five seconds ago. This is not immediate. All right, next up we have the Panther, who is also a crewmate role. Um, this one is super simple and probably the lamest out of all the roles, but it does have some potential interesting things that can happen. The Panther will only have to do half the amount of tasks as everyone else. So, for example, if the default amount of tasks is 6, the Panther will only have to do 3. Um, and this number is rounded up, so let's say it's 7. Um, instead of it being 3.5 tasks, it would be 4 tasks. The Game Changer, another crewmate role. For the next couple of them, they're all going to be crewmate roles. I'll uh, explain when it's not a crewmate role, but uh, yes, the Game Changer. I really like this role. The Game Changer is immune to a wide variety of specific attacks and actions from various special roles. And uh, this, this is a pretty large list, so I'll go over it. Here's the list. Um, they are immune to being shot by the Sheriff being swapped by the swapper, being shifted by the shifter, being cleaned up by the janitor, being sampled by the morphling, and having their bodies dragged by the undertaker. In the case of both the sheriff and the shifter, after an attempted kill or shift, both players will live, but this will still count as an attempt and will reset the cooldown. Um, that being said, the Game Changer can still be targeted by the Assassin, so if the Morphling is able to work with the Assassin and figure out that, hey, this is the Game Changer, that will not work out well for the Game Changer. Um, but otherwise, they're immune to a lot of different special roles, so there you go. I really like that role. Uh, that's one of my personal favorites. Alright, next up we have the Safeguard. This one's kind of lame, but it is it has the potential to be really cool. The Safeguard will have a personal shield that they can temporarily activate that will protect them from all damage for a short time. I, I, like how, I like how I say all damage, like they can take a small amount of damage. It protects them from being killed, um, or shifted, or stuff like that. That's what I'm getting at, right? I, I may have worded that confusingly, but uh, basically all the kind of stuff. Um, anyways, it protects them from all damage for a short time, with a cooldown afterwards. By default... The following apply, but can be modified. The usage time is 3 seconds. The usage cooldown is 30 seconds. These are other modifiers that can be changed. So, by default, nobody can see the attack notification during an attack. However, some other options that can be enabled in the settings include the safeguard who can see the attack, or the, the safeguard who can see the attack notification during an attack, or the attacker, or both. Visibly, this shield will look identical to the shield of the medic, and the attack screen, if turned on, would look the same as well. Next up we have the Haunter, another crewmate role. Inspired by the Phantom from Gmod TTT, when this player is killed, their killer will glow for a short amount of time, making it obvious who killed them. By default, this amount of time is 5 seconds, but can be changed in the settings. Also, whenever their killer is thrown out, killed, or disconnected, all players alive and dead will see the word killer in black, along with their name, the next time they are in a meeting. So, for example, if red kills blue, and blue is the haunter, um, the, if red either dies, gets thrown out, or gets disconnected, the next time that everyone is in a meeting, um, it will show killer underneath the, that person. So everyone will know that person killed the Haunter. Alright, now we have the Fraud, another crewmate role. This one is inspired by the Glitch from Gmod TTT. I know this is getting confusing because a lot of the names were taken, that's why I went with the Fraud. Anyways, the Fraud will be an additional imposter on the imposter's roster. What that means is by if, if by default you have three imposters, if a Fraud is in play, there, there will be four imposters that will be visible to the other imposters. Of course, one of them is actually a fraud, so there's still only three imposters, but they won't know which one is the real imposter or not. He or she will appear as any of the randomly available roles, and may even potentially take a fake role from a real imposter. That meaning, uh, if there's only three imposter roles available, they could take the Undertaker, for example, um, and force 
a real imposter to be only a vanilla imposter rather than being a special role. I just just to clarify what I mean by that. What what is the role of the fraud? They can vent, but cannot kill or use any of the special abilities of the imposter that they are supposed to be imitating. So it's up to the real imposters to find out who the fraud is. When the fraud is in play, the imposters can kill their teammates, and the assassin can target and kill their teammates. But if he or she falsely assumes that a real imposter is the fraud, the assassin will be killed instead. The fraud does not know who the real imposters are, though they will know what their fake role is. For example, if you are the fraud, it might potentially say fraud-swooper, or fraud-undertaker, for example. And will of course be visible from the dead players, assuming that the option is turned on. The final of the crewmate roles, we have the detective. Inspired by the detective role in GMA TTT, if the detective reports a body, the detective will be notified the role of the body they reported. Other additional options include if everybody knows the role, on or off, um, and the victims of the reported body will be shown either off or to the detective or to everyone. This well, once again, kind of uh, shows, it replicates how it works in Gmon TTT. Just in case, if it wasn't clear what I was getting at, um, when it says everybody knows the role, what that means is that whenever you go into a meeting and the detective reports the body, if everybody knows the role is turned on, that means that the person who died will have their role underneath them. So if the engineer is killed and the detective reports the body of the engineer, everybody in the lobby will know that the engineer has died, alive or dead. Um, assuming that this role, assuming that this option is turned on. If the person of the body that they reported is somebody who is killing other people, then all of the victims of the reported body will also be known, and this could be either known to only the detective, or known to everyone, or it could be known to nobody, assuming that you turn that setting off. Alright, now the big one. Our one and only neutral role, the righteous. This one is really complicated and kind of a doozy, so just try and stick with me as I explain how this role works. This player simply needs to make it to the top two or three, depending on the number of starting imposters, without getting voted out or dying to the glitch. So, the imposters will know who this player is, but the imposters cannot kill this player, even with the assassin, and if they try, he or she will be killed his or herself. The imposters can still win by sabotage, however. But if they kill such that the Righteous is one of the last two or three alive, the imposters lose and the Righteous wins. If the game starts with one or two imposters, the Righteous has to be one of the final two alive, with an asterisk. And one of the final three if it starts with three imposters. If there are three imposters alive alongside the Righteous, or if the game starts off with two imposters, and the two imposters are alive alongside the Righteous, the imposters win automatically. If the game starts off with one imposter though, things get interesting. Then, the Righteous can only win if the single imposter gets thrown out, and there are two remaining players. So if the last two players are the Righteous and the imposter, the imposter wins. But if the last two players alive are the Righteous and a non-imposter role, then the Righteous wins. That being said, if the Righteous is one of the last three alive, and both of the remaining players are non-glitch neutrals, then the Righteous wins. But if there is even one crewmate alive, and no imposters alive, and more than three players in the game alive, then the crewmates win, assuming the Righteous is also alive. Regardless of the amount of potential neutral roles, but if there isn't a single crewmate imposter or glitch left, then the Righteous wins, regardless of the amount of non-glitch neutrals. Obviously, just like other neutral roles except the glitch, if the imposter gets thrown out before the win condition is satisfied, then the Righteous loses and the crewmates win. Any glitch must be dead in order for the Righteous to win, and if the glitch and the Righteous are the last two remaining, the glitch wins. I know, it's a lot, it's kind of complicated, so here's a chart to more easily demonstrate the win conditions if there is a Righteous. 
So if you're looking at this chart, you can kind of see exactly what I was going for. Um, we have the, uh, the different possible win conditions and any of the scenarios that aren't on the screen means that the game isn't over yet because none of the win conditions have been satisfied. Notably, as you can see, the crewmates can only win if either they throw out the righteous and the righteous is dead, or it's just the righteous, one crewmate, and the rest are either crewmates or non-glitch neutrals. Um, this will change, however, if the righteous is alive and all of the other players are non-glitch neutrals, which is NGN, that is NGN, that is what it stands for, is non-glitch neutrals. The parentheses along the number of imposters, that is to show how many imposters would need, how many starting imposters would have to be in that game in order for the, the imposter to count, right? So, for example, um, in order for the imposters to win with the righteous still being alive, with three imposters, all three imposters have to be alive. If the game starts off with two imposters, both the imposters have to be alive, and if there's only one imposter, then that single imposter has to be alive, because obviously. One notable thing is that the Righteous will win if they are alone with any non-glitch, except if that non-glitch is an imposter. But if it's, if it's an imposter in a game where they're the sole imposter. However, if it's an imposter in a game where it starts off with two imposters, then the righteous wins. But if it's one imposter that the game starts off with, then the imposter wins, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, if the if anybody who sees this says, hey, this is way too complicated and you wish to change it, I don't really blame you. It is complicated. I like how the dynamic of this with the righteous rules works out. I think it's really fundamentally interesting. Though I can understand if somebody were to look at this and be like, this is way too complicated to implement, I don't want to implement it, I know it might make sense, but we want to change it up a bit so that it's easier to understand, and anybody who's actively in a match has a basic idea of who could potentially win, because it's so confusing with this settings, but I do think these settings are more interesting. Moving on to the last two roles, these are both imposter roles, we have the Hitman. This one is inspired by the Assassin from Gmon TTT. The Hitman has a single target and will want to kill that target. If the Hitman kills his or her target, they get half the kill cooldown. If they kill a non-target, they get double the kill cooldown. So kind of like the underdog, except uh, it's not reliant on killing specific person, or it is reliant on killing a specific person rather than how many of your imposter buddies are left, but in a vein somewhat similar to the underdog. And last but not least, we have the Converter. This one has potential for some hilarious moments and some infuriating moments, and I think this is why it's so interesting. The Converter can convert any neutral role to become a regular imposter with no special modifiers by being next to him or her and using the Convert button. So uh, on the screen, you'll have a button that is the Convert button. If you click the Convert button while being um, an appropriate distance away from another player, then it will convert them, assuming that they are a neutral role. When I say neutral role, I mean any neutral role. So even if they're the glitch, they will be converted. If they're the executioner, they will be converted. So it's actually kind of up to the imposters to try and figure out who any potential uh, neutral roles are, like the jester or the righteous, for example. But this is a high-risk, high-reward scenario, because if the Converter attempts to convert a crewmate role, the Converter will die instead. So, it's kind of somewhat similar-ish to the Shifter, um, except not quite exactly how it works. Um, I, I, could, I could also say this is somewhat kind of inspired by the Hypnotist from Gmod TTT, except different in a number of ways. Um, notably that the target is alive, rather than how in Gmon TTT the target would be dead. The person that's being converted would be dead. I apparently was going to write more modifiers and I just couldn't think of any. But this video has been long enough, I've explained a lot of the things I wanted to explain. Big emphasis on the a lot part, because apparently, uh, like I mentioned before, I forgot a couple of the things I wanted to mention earlier, but that's okay. We're going to mention it here at the end. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't put this at the beginning, and it's because, in terms of the editing, 
of the video, it's a lot easier to put it at the end and not have to move everything around. So basically laziness. That's... Anyways, moving on. Number six, the option for the Phantom to only be able to be clicked by certain roles. So, normally, whenever you're playing as the Phantom, you can get clicked by anybody. You could get clicked by a glitch, an executioner, an imposter, or a crewmate. So, to make it a little bit easier for the Phantom, how about make it so that they can only be clicked by certain roles? Um, they can be clicked by everybody, which is the way it is now, or how about only non-imposters, or non-crewmates, or non-neutrals? Those are, those are the four options. Everybody, non-imposters, non-crewmates, non-neutrals. There you go, that makes it a little bit easier for the Phantom. It gives them a much better chance of actually making it around the map and doing their tasks. Uh, it doesn't make it impossible for people to counter it, um, but it does give uh, any Phantom a slightly higher chance of actually getting to their tasks and whatnot. And finally, we have um, the Executioner cannot have the Swapper as their target as it would make their role redundant and too difficult to win otherwise. There's been a scenario that's happened to me when I was playing Town of Us, where I was the Executioner, and my target was the Swapper. And you know what the Swapper did after I accused him of, you know, doing stuff? He swapped with me. So what am I supposed to do? My, the, the, when he can defend himself from getting voted out, I feel like there's nothing I can do there. Like, that's just... That was really annoying when that happened. I'm still annoyed about it to this day, because it's like, what What am I supposed to do? Like, literally, my whole goal, and I think somebody else did the math, it was like a 0.0013% chance of that happening, and it happened to me. That's insane. And I know it's... You know, apparently the math is not on my side, and, you know, that wasn't supposed to happen. But it did happen, and it shouldn't happen, so there you go. Make it a special, make a special clause or addition such that the Executioner can have anybody as their target except the Swapper, or any crewmate as their target except the Swapper. Because if they have the Swapper as the target, that's just way too annoying. And you'd think that within this amount of time, I would have came up with uh, more modifiers. Uh, no. I haven't. I'll think of a couple, and then I'll write them down here. And if, uh, if, I, if I can't think of any, then I'll cut this part out of the video. As for the modifiers, we have a handful of them. We have the teleporter applies to all. By pressing the button the first time, you set down your teleporter at one location. And the second time you press it, you will teleport to that location. Similar to how the teleporter works in Gmod TTT. By default, the cooldown is 30 seconds after usage, but there are other options to change this cooldown time. Button Ben also applies to everyone. You get one extra button push than whatever is set for everyone else. If everybody has one button press for the emergency button, the Button Ben will have two. If everybody has zero, Button Ben will have one etc. Mind Reader. This modifier only applies to imposters. They will get a glowing screen if a crewmate or neutral role is within range of a body to report it. So basically if the, a crewmate or neutral has the ability to report a body, the Mind Reader will get a glowing notification on their screen saying, hey, somebody is nearby a body. Safety First. Uh, this one also applies to everyone. This one simply means that whoever has the safety first modifier is immune from getting thrown out in the first round. So you can take solace in knowing that no matter what happens in the first round, you cannot get thrown out. Omniscient. This one only applies to neutral roles. Simply they can see if someone is in a vent when near it. So they can walk up to a vent or just be somewhat near a vent and they can see that the vent is different. Maybe the vent is red or whatever the case may be, but they will know somebody is in that vent. And like I said, this only applies to neutral roles. This one also only applies to neutral roles guarded. They are simply immune to an assassination attempt. So, for example, the Jester, the Righteous, whoever... Um, no matter what, the assassin cannot assassinate anybody that has the guarded modifier. Unfazed. This one applies to everybody, crewmates, neutrals, imposters alike. They are simply immune to the seer and shifter. The seer and the shifter cannot shift or see them. An ability use, uh, all ability use attempts 
will simply reset the cooldown and that's all. Uh, nobody will die in the case of the shifter, the seer simply just won't know if they are good or bad, the shifter, um, if they try to shift into an imposter, but the imposter is unfazed, or has the unfazed modifier, then they don't die. Instead of them normally dying, if they have the unfazed modifier, they wouldn't die. Um, and last but not least, we have the champion modifier, and this one only applies to crewmates. Once the champion has died, all of their tasks will be complete immediately. This one could be really OP with the snitch. So if the snitch dies, all of their tasks are done immediately. Um, so if they are then brought back to life, they know who all of the imposters are. Um, and well, they would already know who all the imposters are, and then they can say who the imposters are. So, um, be careful if you have the champion modifier. You're gonna definitely want to make sure that the snitch don't doesn't know who they are at round start, because then they might purposefully want to die um, with the plan of getting revived. I don't know exactly how it would work, but there is potential that the champion could be brought back to life with all of their tasks done. And that person could be the snitch, and then they could reveal the uh, the imposters and the glitches and whatnot. <sighs> Anyways, back that was the uh, post recording stuff. Now back to the original video. Um, I hope it was really fun coming up with and thinking of all of these potential updates for Town of Us. I love Town of Us. I recently just took a small break from it, but I still love it at its core. And I think if these changes were to be made to Town of Us. It would be an even better game. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like these ideas, be sure to tell the developers of Town of Us, or the, the mod team. Um, go to polis.gg and let them know that, hey, these are suggestions you would like to see. Thank you guys, and uh, I have other videos coming out. Some are related to Among Us, some aren't, who knows. Um, Thank you, and have a good day.